All right, guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, let's talk about piano compression. And as always, uh, hit the link in the description for my free reverb cheat sheet if you haven't done that already. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, all the YouTube things, and uh, let's get to the video. So piano compression is a tricky subject because you're getting into such a wide range of sounds uh, and both, both in style and quality. <laughs> you know, uh, some pianos out there just sound like toys and some sound like sound indistinguishable from a grand piano so this really can change from piano to piano but my thought process with this is you want the thing to sound as natural as possible a lot of modern worship keyboard sounds have compression built into them and that if you learn the sound of compression you'll hear that really quickly. Uh, I think it sounds really good, and I actually kind of like that sound. A lot of the Nord sounds seem to have that going for them. I, I don't know if that's something in the stock sounds or what. I'm not a keyboard player. But the point is, you need to make a decision about compressing a keyboard if it needs it, not just for the sake of compressing it because you compress things. So being able to hear compression on the front end of a sound that's already built in uh, is really good. Uh, and just a good skill to develop. But we're going to talk about this one because this one is not. And this keyboard can use some help in the dynamic range world. So what I listen for, a lot of times to me, a keyboard needs the compression on the front end because people will just slam down on the keys and it's a really transient sound and has a wide dynamic range, but then it tapers off really quickly. I feel like often the issues are in the attack time. Yes, you need to have a reasonable release time, but I feel like the, the your biggest win is going to be on your attack time. So how I mess around with this is if I'm listening in solo, which we'll do first, I will set the attack time at a ridiculously fast thing. It's going to be too it's going to be too much. And then I will slowly uh, let off until it starts sounding more natural and getting the sound that I'm looking for. So First, I will take the threshold all the way up, and then we'll dial it down until we're consistently compressing a few dB, and uh, we'll crank the attack up and see where it starts to level off and sound real again. So that's completely choked. Obviously, it doesn't sound very good. So let's slowly bring the attack up. You hear it starts coming out and sounding a little bit more. So like the cliche goes, you mix with your ears, not your eyes. But what I hope you can notice there is there was a point that we started losing our uh, compressed signal where it started, you know, creeping back up the meter rather than staying compressed. And what that tells us is we're starting to move away from the transients of the signal so that the loudest parts being the initial transient isn't going to be compressing the signal at that point, if that makes sense. We're moving outside of that initial spike. So I kind of like the sound at a uh, 20 millisecond attack. Uh, also, we're at a, a 3 to 0 ratio here. Um, I kind of like the sound of the 20 millisecond attack. I'm not going to mess with the hold. Uh, and let's just do the same thing with the release. Uh, let's just crank it real low uh, where it's going to really be pumping and it's not. That's gonna, it's going to sound really bad. But let's do the same thing there and just slowly crank it up until it sort of begins matching the feel of the attack where things, they're working together. I'll bring the uh, threshold down so that we can exaggerate it again. And you can see there it actually starts compressing more because we're gonna, the compressed signal is sticking around longer now because the release is being extended out. I felt like anywhere between 80 milliseconds and 100 sounded pretty natural there where it's going to knock off the front end of the signal and then it's not going to immediately let off or it's going to not going to keep it pinned down the whole time. That seemed to kind of work pretty well. So let's see what these two sound like with a reasonable amount of gain reduction happening. 
let's shoot for like three or four on average. Just see, no science to that. Let's hang out right there. And now let's bring the gain, or make a gain up three dB. So an AB, you can turn the compression on and off. So, I mean, we ended up at 20, 27 millisecond attack, a 95 millisecond release, and 3 dB of makeup gain. You know, uh, that's not an exact science, and you're definitely going to want to tweak uh, your settings. But let's see what this sounds like in the mix, and we'll do an AB. We'll start off with it off. So it's off. So we ended up with a little bit more uh, compression than uh, you know I expected once we kicked in that chorus and started playing a little bit harder. But I felt like the compression, you know, even though it may have been a little more, was kind of keeping things in check and keeping a steady signal so it sounds more glued to the track. So this is what I would have done in this case. Uh, let me know what you would do and if you have any other methods of using compression because that is an endless topic we can talk about. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you guys in the next one.